Hello, I am Avijit Dutta and today I am going to present the work minimizing the two round trickable event monster cipher. So uh, it is about designing a trickable block cipher. So I will begin this talk with a brief background on trickable block ciphers. Then I will talk about the contribution of this paper. Followed by that, I will discuss a brief roadmap of the security proof of this construction. And finally, I will conclude the talk. So a trickable block cipher is a variant of a block cipher in which the primitive takes a message M, an input key K, and also a public value called tweak T. And this tweak is perhaps controlled by an adversary. So like block cipher, tweakable block cipher also process a fixed size data. Moreover, for each pair of key K and the tweak T, this function ETK is basically a permutation over 0, 1 to the n. And for each key k, ek, this is a family of permutations over 0, 1 to the n. So in case of a block cipher, if you fix the key k, then the ek is basically a function from 0, 1 to the n, to 0, 1 to the power n, and that's the bijective function. But in case of a tweakable block cipher, if you fix the key k, then ek is basically a family of permutations over 0, 1 to the n, and that family is indexed by the tweak t. <coughs> the application of tweakable block cipher was first observed in Husty Pudding cipher, Mercy cipher or a three fish cipher and they actually identified the need of this tweak for introducing the variability in their design specifications and they call the tweak a spice or a randomizer. They also include a basic security notion of the primitive but without giving any formal proof. In fact, the formal proof of tweakable block cipher or the formalization of tweakable block cipher was done by Liskov, Rivest and Wegener in crypto 2002. <coughs> so any design of a tweakable block cipher should be as efficient as possible and uh, the, the change of the tweak should be less costly than changing the key. Okay? So if you, if you uh, change the key then that basically invokes a key scheduling algorithm and invoking the key scheduling, uh, key scheduling algorithm is basically a costly operation. So you need to keep in mind that while designing a tweakable block cipher, the tweak change may occur frequently and the tweak change should, you know, pay a less cost than changing the uh, key. And uh, the security of this tweakable block cipher should hold even if the adversary has the power to control the tweak. And for each fixed setting of the tweak t, it gives rise to an independent family of block cipher. So for, a, for each tweak, it should give you the independent uh, family of the block cipher. Note that that tweak is not meant to be kept secret. So the key is the only part that provides the uncertainty to the cipher. The, the purpose of the tweak is to provide the variability in the cipher, but not it does not provide any additional uncertainty or any additional, you know, secrecy. In order to model the security <coughs> notion of tweakable block cipher, so here we consider an adversary uh, A that has access to some oracle. So it has access to the tweakable uh, block cipher. It has access to the oracle tweakable block cipher in the real world and the tweakable random permutation in the ideal world. So the adversary is given access to either of this oracle, adversary does not know that and adversary is only allowed to make query to this oracle. So adversary makes query with the tweak t and the message m and it gets back some response. So after making a finite number of queries, if the adversary is not able to distinguish that whether it has interacted to the tweakable block cipher or a random perm tweakable random permutation, then we will say that the tweakable block cipher is a secure tweakable block cipher. In particular, we will say that the tweakable block cipher is a uh, tweakable pseudo-random permutation. Uh, moreover, if the adversary has additional access to the inverse function of the tweakable block cipher, then and again the adversary is failed to uh, distinguish between these two scenarios, then we will say that the tweakable block cipher is a secure tweakable pseudo-random permutation. The first secure design of tweakable block cipher was observed in uh, LRW1 construction. This was proposed by again Liskov, Rivest and Wegener in crypto 2002 in which the construction was built out of a block cipher. They actually invoke uh, two block cipher calls uh, where the tweak T is masked with the input message M 
and it uh, gives you the cipher text C. Okay. This construction was shown to be secure up to 2 power n by 2 queries where your the assumption is that the block cipher is should be is, is a secure block cipher that right that means it's a secure pseudo random permutation okay and this attack is basically uh, this this security bound is basically tight because you can mount a bird bound attack with the same query complexity right in order to mitigate the double block cipher call in LRW1 construction they have also proposed another construction which they call as LRW2 construction in which the tweak is processed through some function which we call as a hash function and the output of the hash function is masked with the message m to provide the input of the block cipher e and then the output of the block cipher is masked with again the hash output of t to generate the cipher text c again this construction was so shown to be secured up to 2 power n by 2 queries but here the assumption is that e is a secure block cipher at the same time the hash function h should be almost or universal hash function hash function Okay, so there have been couple of examples which are shown to be to have birthday bound security, birthday bound secure tweakable block ciphers. These are for example, Zor entry Zor construction proposed by Rogawe in Asia Crypt 2004, and uh, the improved security analysis of Zor encrypt Zor and uh, LRW construction was done by Menamatsu in SAC 2006. There have been couple of other examples of tweakable block cipher which gives beyond birth bound security. For example, the ENR construction by Minamatsu or CLRW, R, R cascading of CLRW construction by Lendecker et al. Uh, there have been another constructions uh, by many which uh, like F1 and F2 constructions uh, was proposed in FSA 2015. So all these constructions are basically built out of a block cipher. So the natural question arises that can we design a tweakable block cipher using some lower level primitive or in other words we say that can we open the hood and design a tweakable block cipher from scratch okay so not depending on the block cipher but using some lower level primitive because block cipher is a rich structure right so can we design a tweakable block cipher from some primitive that is not that very rich okay so perhaps any uh, public permutation can we design that can we design a tweakable block cipher so to answer the question let us see that is there any you know uh, uh, way to construct a block cipher out of some public permutation so this question was answered by even and mansu so they proposed an even mansu cipher in which the input x is masked with a key k to generate the input of the permutation p and the output of the permutation is again masked with another n bit independent key k2 to generate the cipher text okay the security of this construction was shown to have uh, birth bound security basically and uh, even if you uh, uh, consider the same key where the k1 and k2 are basically same again the resulting construction can be shown to have the birth bound security this construction was generalized and yield uh, iterated even mansu cipher where you have uh, r many random permutation okay and r plus one one many random keys independent keys and uh, you know you just iterated the even mansu cipher for r many times and you generated the cipher text c the security of this construction was shown uh, to have r n by r plus one bit security and this security bound is a tight security bound this was shown by chen and stenberger in eurocrypt 2014 the uh, only assumption of these constructions are uh, that the PIs or the permutations are independent and the round keys KIs have to be independent. Moreover, a follow up work of this construction was done by Chen et al in crypto 2014 where they uh, considered a two round iterated even Mansu cipher but in this time they considered the same permutation and they actually considered a in bit master key by which they derived uh three many round keys but those round keys are not considered to be independent so they used a uh, good key scheduling function to derive the round keys from an n-bit master key okay so now uh, let us ask that can we uh, tweak the design iem or iterated even mansu cipher to make the resulting construction tweakable that can be somehow incorporate the tweak t into this iterated even mansu construction so a natural approach is to you know is to apply a function f on the key k and the tweak t and the, uh, the output of the function is masked in the internal state of the uh, cipher okay 
So this idea was already, you know, uh, considered by Jha et al. in Asia Crypt 2014 in their Tweaky framework setting, where the tweak and the key was unified. Okay, but you know, uh, till now there has been no uh, kind of uh, 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 strategy to prove the security of such kind of a constructions where tweak and key are unified. Okay. Okay, so uh, now let us instantiate the function f where which whose output are masked in the internal state. So let us first take a simple example that what if if I take all the functions to just to be a zor of the key k and the tweak t. Okay, so if all the f i k t is basically a zor of key k and the tweak t, then irrespective of the number of rounds, the security of this construction is actually boiled down to have the birth the bound security. So this was shown by Cogliati and Surin in Eurocrypt 15 and independently Fersham and Proctor shown this result in FSC 15 paper. Moreover, a trivial observation is that if you take this uh, uh, key scheduling function to have only the ZOR of key and tweak t, then the one round and two round constructions are not secure. Okay, then uh, uh, Cogliati and all, uh, Cogliati et al in Crypto 2015 uh, came up with a construction they, which they call a streaking event mensu cipher which in which they used a two round uh, iterated event mensu cipher but in this time the hash function is used to you know to uh, process the tweak t. So the hash value of the tweak t is masked to the input x to generate the input for the first permutation call and then the output is again masked with the h1 t or h2 t where h1 and h2 are two independent uh, hash function. And again, the resulting state is uh, becomes the input of the second permutation call. And finally, the output of the second permutation call is masked with the H2 of T to generate the cipher text Y. So here the assumptions are P1 and P2. These are two independent random permutation. And the hash function H1 and H2, these are two independent hash functions. Moreover, they have to be almost all universal hash function. And this construction provides security up to the query complexity to power 2n by 3. And they have also shown that if we cascade these constructions for r many rounds, okay, so where you uh, take the independent instances of the permutations and all the hash functions are independent, then that gives you the r n by r plus 2 bit security. So naturally, a couple of open problems came up that uh, can we analyze these constructions with a single permutation? Can we reduce the independence of the hash function? And can we uh, avoid the nonlinear tweak and key mixing? Okay. So in the same year. Uh, Cogliati and Surin answered the question, in particular the third, third questions uh, that can we avoid the nonlinear tweak and key mixing. So uh, they have shown that yes you can, if you can take 2 n bit keys and n bit tweak, then you just alternately you know uh, uh, ma uh, uh, alternately mask the key and tweak. Okay? And if you can do that then the four independent, with 4 independent n bit permutations you can uh, show uh, but beyond but the bound security of the resulting construction. So it provides a security up to the query complexity to power 2n by 3 but the only limitation is that the, the permutations are have to be independent and you know you need 2n bit keys. Again uh, natural, uh, uh, a couple of open problems came up that can we reduce the number of permutations not the number of rounds and can we analyze it with uh, n bit key and n bit tweak. So instead of having uh, 2 n bit key can we uh, uh, analyze the constructions if we only take the n bit key. Okay, so now our contributions come. Uh, so in this paper what we have done, so uh, we have uh, in particular answer the uh, questions posed by the cognitive et al in Eurocrypt paper. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, so we are we are we are using the tweaking event mensu cipher, but in this case, instead of having uh, independent permutations p1 and p2, we are making it a single permutations. But we also, but but we need a two independent almost or universal hash functions, but we only need a single n bit permutation, and that is basically a natural approach to design a tweakable block cipher. If you see, because we uh, we we actually use a same we actually use the same permutation, and that permutation is rotated over the rounds. Okay. 
and uh, we have shown that uh, if you use this construction I mean if you make the uh, uh, two permutations identical then the security bound does not degrade at all in particular it provides uh, the same similar similar level of security and uh, a, a trivial observation is that if your hash functions are same or identical if h1 equals to h2 then that clearly leads to a birthday bound attack. Then again, uh, so the hash function is basically, you know, uh, uh, non-linear uh, uh, mixing because a trivial hash functions, which is a secure hash function, a sec secure almost or universal, uh, universal hash function is basically a multiplication, multiplicative hash function, right? But that multiplicative hash function is basically a non-linear mix of the key and the tweak t, right? So can we avoid a non-linear mixing? So again, we uh, answered the uh, question posed in the uh, Coglet and Surin paper, uh, Asia Crypt paper, uh, where can we reduce the number of uh, uh, number of uh, permutations or can we reduce the number of keys? So we have shown that yes, we can reduce the number of permutations, but not number of keys. So in particular, we the, our construction actually takes. Uh, two n bit random permutations in p1 and p2 and two n bit keys and n bit tweak okay so uh, again uh, if you if you make this construction or if you use this construction then you are not uh, degrading the security of the construction so it provides the similar level of security so it, it, it gives you the 2 n by 2, 2 power 2 n by 3 uh, security and again the open problems uh, of these two constructions is that can we use the n bit key and n bit tweak and can we make all the permutations identical so that is still open okay okay so now let us uh, quickly go to the uh, proof or structure of this uh, of this construction so we basically prove the uh, prove the security of these constructions in random permutation model so in random permutation model adversary is given access to the query uh, is given access to the oracle so in the real world it uh, it is given access to the real oracle in the ideal world it is given access to the ideal oracle but addition in addition of this uh, in addition of the access to this oracle the adversary is also given access to the internal primitive of the constructions in particular if it's the permutation based construction then the ad adversary is given access to the underlying permutations p and also its inverse p inverse okay so distinguisher is uh, allowed to make oracle queries to the oracles but uh, in addition to that it is also allowed to make the forward and the inverse queries to the internal primitives so this model is basically a resemblance of the ideal cipher model or the random oracle but these models are not relevant to our context okay so we will uh, prove the security of these constructions in the random permutation model and in order to prove the security of this construction h coefficient technique comes as a handy tool you know so uh, to, to in order to prove the security of the construction so in this uh, technique adversary is interacting either with the real oracle or with the ideal oracle and after the interaction is over we basically you know collect the query and response in a transcript tau and we partition the set of all transcripts into the good and bad transcripts and then we compute the ratio of the real to ideal interpolation probability for a good transcript and the h coefficient technique says that for any good transcript tau if the ratio of the real to ideal interpolation probability is very close to one modulo some negligible error term which we call epsilon one and if the probability that a transcript belongs to the bad transcript set uh, this probability is very negligible uh, which we denote as epsilon two then the distinguishing advantage of the adversary in order to distinguish the real from the ideal can be upper bounded by epsilon one plus epsilon two so the, then the question comes that in order to apply the h coefficient technique in the security proof of our constructions uh, how do we characterize the bad events so uh, if you apply the h coefficient technique in order to prove the security of, of any symmetric crypto system then you need to identify three things first of all you need to identify the bad events then you need to uh, upper bound the bad event in the ideal uh, world and third for a, if, if you take any good transcript then you need to uh, lower bound the ratio of the real to ideal interpolation probability the three things okay so let us take the first step of the characterizing bad events for our constructions so the main idea of characterizing bad event is to avoid the twofold collisions this is one and second of all that we need to identify the event for which they are finally we are, we are not getting any randomness of p okay so uh, to, to avoid the twofold collisions you can consider the case that if you have a construction query say tx which is an input to the permutation p and the you know that that becomes uh, that become collides with some internal primitive with some internal primitive query then the output is determined and if the determined output 
is again determines the input of the second permutation call then you are you are, you are you are losing the game because in that case you are not getting the out cipher of the out, uh, the output of the um, construction as a random right similarly if there are two construction queries say tx and t prime x prime in which they collide at the input of the permutation p and if the then the output of the permutation will also collide but again if that collision again makes a collision to the second input uh, second uh, input of the second permutation call then again you are not supposed to get the randomness in the output of the resulting uh, of, of the construction right so uh, in particular there are 14 more bad cases of uh, more cases of bad events so if you are interested you can see our eprint paper and the basic idea of the bad event is to capture the randomness of p where the randomness of p is vanished okay and if these bad events do not happen then for each query uh, each construction query it is ensured that at least for one uh, permutation p its input and output is fresh okay and after characterizing all the bad events so we when we upper bound the bad events individually then the bad probability that we get is very close to uh, is very negligible provided the number of constructions query q is 2 power 2n by 3 and the number of primitive query p is 2 power 2n by 3 okay so and uh, uh, if the bad events do not happen then we calculate the ratio of the real to ideal interpolation probability and in that case we have uh, shown that the ratio is very close to 1 modulo the error term which is qp square over 2 to the n plus pq square over 2 to the n and this is negligible uh, if the number of queries is less than 2 power 2n by 3 uh, that includes the permutation query I mean the construction query and the primitive query and you know the core of this paper is the analysis of the good probability and that is a very hard combinatorial problem which is not possible to explain in this slide so uh, so so now we conclude the paper that uh, in this paper we have shown that how to design a tweakable block cipher from scratch and uh, we need to reduce the amount of independence as much as possible and our construction basically proposes a single permutation variant of the tweakable even monsoon cipher that are already in the literature and uh, uh, reducing the independence does not dig the security that is the main thing that we have shown and it is important to push this design beyond 2n by 3 bit security that means can we you know uh, push the security bound beyond the 2 power 2n by 3 bound okay can we can we uh, improve the security bound of this construction for example to 2 power 3 n by 4 or 2 power 4 n by 5 something like that okay and uh, so that is the end of my talk so if you have any query you can drop me a mail at uh, avirocks.dutta13 at the gmail.com. Thank you.